Well, good morning and welcome back to the workshop. There's nothing to do now but get the wheels on the Maid of Kent and see if the last two or three months have been a colossal waste of time or not. Let's have a look. So what we've got here is the dividing head and the little toe. It's holding the wheels up at a um, uh, about four inches and 12 foul. So I've got a little bit of shim in here and, and over here, and that's to, to make up the difference in heights. And that's what we're doing here is we're, we're creating these supports, which are the center height minus the radius of whatever this feature is. So then for example, I can bring this crank pin down and I can bring this coupling rod pin down and I know that the, they have, um, their center lines are, are exactly in line with each other. They're rotated to the same amount. All right, there's the uh, first setting done. I have the right hand coupling pin, 180 degrees from the right hand crank. If I do this, these two, uh, the, the, the center line of this axle and the center line of uh, the crank pin must be vertical relative to the surface of the table. So I can then move this set of supports over to this side, bring this wheel around, and then that should set me at exactly 90 degrees. Second one's in, just got some various weights dangling off to keep everything rotated the correct way. I'm glad I did split axle boxes, because obviously there's a tiny bit of um, residue coming in here and having to clean that off with the axle box there, pretty sure the whole thing would get gummed up completely. That's what happened when I first did the axle with this pump eccentric. A tiny bit of Loctite got inside the bore and uh, locked it completely. All right, this is the setup for jigging the trailing axle. So I've got it, the uh, wheel set back in between centers and I have put the uh, riser section up here with the little shim, in this case a drill bit. And over this side, I've got some silver steel in the drill chuck. I use the Brizzler trick to get this basically bang on here. So I know if I rotate the, this crank pin or this coupling rod pin around so it rests on there, then rotate the other one so it's flush up against here, I should get the same angle, whatever this angle is, on the other wheel set. Right, it's in. I am sorry there's no video for this, but this is so stressful. So here's literally the first time I had the coupling rods on both sides, and... I mean, that's pretty good, isn't it? Really, in the grand scheme of things, given that I was making these rods on an unknown wheelbase, and the uh, the chassis was, uh, you know, something I'd inherited. Um, yeah, I'm really pleased. There's two little tight spots. It's about here, I guess. It's fairly tight. I mean, it's, it's, I say it's fairly tight. You know, it's it's two fingers to push it round, so it's not not mega tight. And here, let's see what it looks like the right way up. Not too bad, eh? There's a little tight spot in there somewhere. But given that Curly Lawrence reckons just go at it with a, a round file, uh, I think I'm, I'm doing all right. It's definitely, it's like two fingers. Now I'll be the first to admit, it's not perfect. But bloody hell, that is a good feeling.